Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It is January 25th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and a really another really good day. We had a, a leg down here, uh, a correction, and then another leg down. First thing you want to do is measure that leg at completion, and wherever your new leg starts. Once you know you're going lower, and you're looking for a measured move on that. Notice we pretty much got that. We went a little bit further and then just went sideways from there. This day was really started like almost every day has started recently. We opened up trading one direction, then we kind of go flat for a little while. Once we, you can tell we're kind of ranging here. Notice how prices are flipping back and forth both sides of the EMA. That's generally a strong clue. And once you've got a real clear estimate of what your range is, width is here once we head lower you want to you just measure that and drag it down and you look for a measured move and you can see we got a perfect to the tick measured move down on that so that would have given you a perfect target uh, as well as this one would have gotten you a pretty good target as well you would have missed the low within three or four points at tops there but on such a big move I mean, that total move down is That's 27 points, so to miss the low within three or four points is pretty doggone good. So but a really good trading day. Lots of entries here. Um, I think I accidentally no, I got them all there. I was thinking I accidentally we, we really were in a trading range up until the two o'clock cutoff hour this one's actually just after the two o'clock hour um, I went ahead and circled it just so I could point, talk about it and point it out but if you were done trading before two o'clock which you likely should be on most days we spent the whole trading day in this trading range of course it's a large trading range um, thirteen thirteen point trading range so that's nothing to sneeze at but uh, We've had some bigger ones lately, but I'm going to back out. We'll talk about the trades. Um, for those of you in the Northeast, I hope you've uh, gotten through the snowstorm. I'm sure you probably still got a lot of snow on the ground up there, but uh, we got slammed pretty good here Friday morning. So I didn't even come into the office Friday morning, but. Uh, Today, the current temperature outside right now here is, and I hate to rub your noses in it, guys. Of course, this is not, you know, beach weather or anything, but compared to what most of y'all are probably going through, it would probably be nice. But the current temperature here is 54 degrees. It's overcast, but uh, the sun's supposed to come out before the end of the day, it looks like. Um, and it is, actually, it's 57 degrees right now, so... Um, I feel pretty good with that compared to what we had Friday morning with a high of about 32 and um, several inches of snow on the ground. So, of course, here everything shuts down. We're not prepared for it. But uh, by 3 o'clock, I think the roads were clear. It just, um, but I doubt y'all um, have that luxury up there. Hopefully they got your roads cleared, but I know y'all have the machinery and stuff like that. So if you're somewhere where you got caught in all that snow, uh, my sympathies and hope uh, hope y'all are moving past it. But uh, it's a big deal here for us because we don't get much snow, and when it's snow on the ground, everything just shuts down. So it makes it tough around here. You know, I couldn't even get my car out of the drive. So that's how bad, <laughs> bad it is for us Southerners down here. But uh, anyway, let's move on to the chart lesson. I showed you the bigger picture. Let's talk now about the trades I saw. The first trade I saw, it was a little iffy. It's a good setup, but the signal bar is just not very good here. Uh, this is really your signal bar, but even the follow-up bar closed uh, more bullish. But it's right off that key entry point. Notice that you've got a trend line working up right there. You get the break, you attempt to get a new high, you can't get it because the bigger trend line is coming into play. So the only real way you could play this one was uh, maybe wait on this bar because this one is more, 
It's a little bit more bearish than this one, and plus it's a double test of that line. So you might wait on a break of it and then try to get in with a limit order. You probably would have missed this trade. You, you might have gotten filled a tick back into that bar, but not much more. And then the bottom falls out. You do get a chance to enter here, though. Notice what happens. You're coming down. You get a. Th this is actually a failed second entry long. Notice the new high here. This swing high is higher than that one, so this is a new swing high. You get your... Um, Move down, first entry up, pull back, second entry, it fails, and almost closes on its low. That's a nice trap right there. Just go short. You, know, you got enough room to get out before you get here. It does pretty much come off the EMA. And quick, easy scalp. You don't get anything more out of it. At this point, it's still a downtrend. We haven't really started to go sideways yet, so I don't like entering long here. And this, you really do have a close outside the new low, and it looks like a little failed break lower. So there's some reasons to consider it, but I think you're better off to wait. Um, I'll circle it green, but I think it's really risky. And you get a second entry counting off the low uh, right here. Uh, but again, it's right into the EMA. We're almost back to up here. I think it's too risky. I think you got to wait. I'm not even going to give it a green one because it's right into the EMA. At least here you're way away from the EMA, so it gives it some other reasons. Uh, you know we're probably going to snap back, and of course we do. Uh, but guess what? It comes back to the EMA. You get a break, a move to a new high. This one breaks higher right there, and look at that big bearish reversal bar. You get a good bar here, unlike here, and this is almost a repeat pattern of this. Except you get a better signal bar. Just go short right there. Another quick move right down to the possible uh, double bottom here. Even though this one a little bit lower, that's close enough to call it a double bottom. And uh, it bounces. And you get another bounce here. And this is what I'm always telling people. Even though this is looking like a range, look at this trend line holding. And it's tempting to enter short right here. But it's so close to that low. And this thing is starting to look like a range now. Um, that I don't think you want to enter there. Uh, it would have still worked. So if you wanted to be real aggressive, but notice this trend line working down, and we don't really have a close outside of it yet. So uh, that makes it really suspect, and that's what I'm always telling people. Pay attention to your shorter-term trend lines. So uh, if you took it, it, it would have worked, but I just don't think you want to take it. You do get a failed second entry long here, but by the time it triggers, it's right back here, and we bounced again. So you definitely don't want to go short right in there. You just want to kind of ride this out and see what happens. Again, it's tempting to consider it down here off the low, but we had not broke this trend line yet. So there's a chance that we may go lower like we do over here. It doesn't do that, but you don't have that crystal ball, so you got to follow the rules, and the rules are we're in a downtrend, and so you better wait and see what happens. Um, wait on a trap or something. So if you get a trap, then yeah, then you're okay. And notice you get one right here. Notice what happens. You got a new swing low. It's lower than that one. You pull back, you get a first entry short. You pull back, you get a second entry short. And you know not to go short right there on a second entry that's really going sideways and has no decent setup bar or anything. And when that second entry short fails and turns up and you get that big reversal bar that closes on its very high, I like going long there because we're overdue for a chance to break this trend line and uh, look at it. it takes off it goes right where does it go to it goes right where you expect the range and you're still going to look for a retest of the low um, and I like this one this is not a perfect setup I went this one's real close to being green but you got a break of this trend line here and a move to a new high but you're coming off that key entry point. Uh, right there, it's a double top, and you get a little bit break higher. What I would do here is let it break lower and then drop a limit order in. And try to get a little better entry, and you could have done that, and then all of a sudden the bottom falls out of it. And this turns out to be a great trade. It's real border, close borderline to being um, green, but I'm going to leave that one red simply because it's a double top, and it actually ticked a tick higher. And those are actually usually stronger double tops than one that's completely even because this traps those traders that like to trade the breakouts and uh, 
it traps a lot of traders. You can see they all had to exit boom once it takes off. And now you've got a break, a move to a new low. Um, we didn't quite get a new low here, but that was close enough. So when we got this bounce right here again on this bar, I like this one. Again, this one's close to being green, and this one probably is clo even closer to green than this one because the bias has been down. Even though we're really sideways now, um, you got to expect that we're probably going to the other side. So I like that for a long, but that's a huge bar. That bar itself is... That is a six and a half. Now, for some reason, it's not giving me the ticks in the bar. Hmm, I got to look into that. Just given the time, open, high, low, close. For some reason, it's not giving me the information. But anyway, that bar is, we'll just measure it real quick. three and a half points so it's way too big it's really large so what you could do is let it break high or drop a limit order and you see it backed up it would have filled you and then it's a quick easy scalp and then it's just continuing to go sideways there's a um, it looks like it's going to be a trap to the short side and it ends up being a trap to the long side but you don't want to go long there because you got that trend line working down through there it may even be more like that right there. And that's the first break. Um, so you figure prices are going to, you got you just got to be real careful about going long right there when you're kind of going sideways up and down like that. But when it goes higher and fails with the downward bias, uh, I would be first looking for this measured move right here. You can see we got just about to that and then we went a little bit lower. Um, and that's a big bearish bar, so I like going short right there. And you got enough room to get out before it bounces here, if it does. And it tries to bounce there, but it just keeps going. You get a breakout pullback short right there, but again, that's the first break lower, really. And so I don't really like that one. But when it tries to go higher again and fails and gives you that big bearish bar, that's the double test of that previous support area. Just go short right there. Another quick, easy move. And this is one of those days where you don't get a lot of runners. This one got a pretty nice runner. It still comes back right here and would have stopped you out. But you would have had a chance to get several points out of that one. Uh, this one would have got a few points before it comes. This one actually doesn't come back. So you might have got a few more out of this one. But, that, but now you've got a break and a new low. So you got to be careful about hanging on there. So there weren't a lot of runners today. Uh, some days you get more than others. And that's just the way it works. That's why when you do get days where you get a lot of them, you need to take advantage of them. But uh, anyway, you would have measured that move down that I showed you earlier from the first half of the trading range. So once we're going lower, you're looking for a measured move down to here. And it bounces there. It's tempting to want to go long here, but that's too neutral. And by the time you get a good bar, then your stop's got to be huge and you're real close to that EMA. So just wait. And see if you get your reversal pattern. And look what happens. It shoots right through the EMA. You get a failed second entry short. There's that big reversal bar. Just go long right there. Quick, easy move. Then it, two legs back. You got your trend line off those first. Actually, you could have really added off those first few bars. And uh, it bounces right here, same place. Um, you get a long right there. It's tempting to want to go in right here, but look at that resistance across there. And, and, it, and when it didn't push on through here and then pull back, that's too risky, even though it would have worked. It does pull back here and give you kind of a breakout pullback long. And that's a really nice bar, uh, bar. But look at all of them stacked up there. There's a doji in there. It's real close to the highs. I just think it's kind of risky. So you got to be careful. This is a double bottom here, though, so you could count this as a failed second entry short, too. But it's a little bit risky. So, and of course, once it's going higher, you know where it's probably going to test the upper side. 
Now, will it get through the other side? You don't know, but we traded down into this trading range. So your bias is, is that if we break out, it's probably going to break out successfully to the low side. And that's exactly the rules followed right through today, like you would expect. Um, notice you got a new high, but that's a real neutral bar. You don't want to go short there. And notice here, we never had a break of this trend line. You might have considered this one, but it's real iffy. So, um, but note, we overshot it up here. When you get an overshoot, sometimes you don't get a retest because the market just reverses and it gets too much steam to the downside or the or whichever way it's going and it can't come back for a retest and that's what happened here but anyway you're better off to wait on your a uh, trap and a, or a second entry counting off uh, counting off the high here and you get that notice it tries to go higher there fails and turns and goes right out the other side just go short right there and if you caught that one you caught a runner today and look you could have ridden this all the way as low as you wanted to go if you just rode it out till two o'clock um it's probably worth let's just see entry would have been right there and if you just rode this out till two o'clock it's gonna be right in there somewhere you know there's your 12 points on one runner and then you get the double test rule. This is more of a midline now than support. It breaks through. It pulls back, tests it once, pulls back, tests it twice. Um, it's right at the EMA, right at the trend line. It's uh, the midline of, the, of this larger trading range. And it's not a real good signal bar, so I only made it green. And we did look like we possibly overshot this. It could have been that it's down here, but we never get down there, so I think we just had an overshoot right there. Uh, so I don't, I'm not crazy about that one. You, by, just by waiting a couple of minutes and being patient, you get a good setup. Now notice, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. You got a failed second entry long, counting off this low. Uh, you got a big bearish reversal bar, just go short right there. Quick, easy move, comes back and gives you another chance. Um, this one is more. There, there's a there's a hidden second entry there, but that bar is so bearish, and that's like a double top across there. It's right at the EMA. It's the first break of this trend line, so you're probably going to retest this low at a very minimum. But it turns out, and this one is at right at just right at the two o'clock hour, just a couple of minutes into it. But it was such a nice setup, I thought I'd circle it. And if you caught that one, you could have ridden this one all the way to the bottom. So. Uh, really good day, relatively straightforward, all the rules kind of fell in place. Uh, just remember that once you see prices start going back and forth above and below the EMA and the EMA is kind of going sideways, that's a trading range. And even if it's got a downward, you can see that within a bigger range sometimes. And so within, if it's doing that within a bigger range, you still can almost trade it both ways. So we'll keep that in mind. So there might even be a bigger pattern here. I didn't even look for one because you don't need it, but there might be a larger pattern here with a bigger. Um, let's just see real quick. That's the wrong line. So yeah, you could almost argue for that trend line right there. But once you're going sideways, you can trade this both ways. Even though there's probably a bigger Trend channel working down through here. Yeah, there definitely is one. You can see that's where we found that support. And if I'd have seen that earlier, even with your measured move right here, you might have hung on to ride it all the way down. So sometimes it, it you may or may not need that bigger pattern, but you can see there. And there's your midline working down through there. Look at that test that came back. It pushed through, comes back, test it, straight down. So yeah, even. So that's a good example of it, of uh, one going sideways within a bigger pat pattern. You didn't really need the bigger pattern, but it still would have helped you in a couple of areas there. So, and once you got the break, you know, you're probably going to get a new low. But really, once you started going lower here, you're looking for that measured move. 
All right, well, that was pretty much it for today. I got through it. Um, not as many trades today as what we've seen on some of these other days, but still a really good trading day. Plenty of nice trades. Not a lot of runners till maybe late in the afternoon. And I'm generally done by lunchtime. I'm usually not going to take any trades after lunchtime because I'm usually done. But somebody asked me today, you know, is it okay to trade before 8.30 a.m.? Yes, I always start trading around 7. A lot of times there's some setups between the 6.30 uh, you know, starting just after 6 o'clock, there's probably enough volume. But generally, it starts moving between 6.30 and 8.30. And it's usually closer to 7 o'clock. I don't get here till 7, so I don't start trading until usually 7, 7.15. So I start showing the trades around the 7 o'clock hour. Um, there's usually not much happening before that. Um, and, there's, and there's not a lot of volume once you get much earlier than that. And so you got to be real careful trading then. But from about 7 o'clock on, yeah, you're safe to trade. And, you really, you know, you could trade after 2 o'clock. I think it's very wise. That's why I have mine. You, you can see my trading time is um, 8.30 is this side and 2 o'clock is on this side. So everything in the white is what I consider the regular trading hours that is safe to trade. Um, I don't like trading after 2 o'clock because if you make a mistake that late in the day, you, you can't make it up. And then sometimes you get some crazier things that happen late in the afternoon. You get some really good moves like this one today. But to me, it's not worth it uh, just because, like I said, the main reason if you make a mistake, you don't have time to make it up. And so, um, you know, if you make a mistake at 8.30 or 9 in the morning, you got a long time to make it up. But if you make one late in the afternoon, then you're probably going to go home with a loser because you don't have time to make it up in most cases. So that's the main reason. And plus, to me, all the moves are more textbook before 1 o'clock. It's usually from about 1 o'clock and usually really from 2 o'clock on that you start to get some moves that just are a little bit odder. The price action still works, everything's still there, but you get more traps and more, you know, fake outs and things like that, it seems like, in the afternoon than you do the mornings for whatever reason. And that could just be my imagination, but I've never, you know, gone and did back testing or anything on that to prove that. That's just my, you know, it's just based on experience watching the charts for sitting here for years watching it. So... But anyway, good trading day. Hope you had a good day. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow, but I'm going to wrap it up for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.